TikTok gets a lot of flack for its book recommendations. And if you ask me, for the most part, I'm glad that so many people are starting to read at all, regardless of how they get back into the hobby. But I will be the first to acknowledge that some of the books I've gotten off of that app are among the worst I have read in my entire life. But my roots are on BookTok, okay? That's where I got my start. I will always feel compelled to read whatever's popular there, whether it's in my best interest or a terrible mistake. And that's what we're doing for this video. I picked out three of the most viral books on TikTok. One I think I'll like, one I think I'll hate, and one where I really could go either way. And I read them, not knowing for even a second what I was getting myself into. All right, hello, welcome to the actual vlog. If you're new here, my name is Lexi, and I'm trying to be somewhat strategic about the order in which I read these books. So we're just gonna start off diving into the deep end with Credence. This is the book that I picked for this video that I feel like I'm most likely to find terrible, but it's also the book where I have this just bizarre candle of curiosity that refuses to be burnt out until I experience it anyways. And why I feel all of these things is that the only thing really that I know about this book is that it's about this girl who moves into the wilderness and then one by one just smashes like her entire step family. And it just baffles me that a book like this has ended up in the mainstream. Like I've seen a lot of videos on TikTok about this book. I have friends from college who are like very normal girls, like way less chronically online than I am. And even they had bought and read this book. Now, did they like it? No, they said it was terrible, but that made me want to read it even more. Despite all of the many reasons there are in the world to protect my peace, I refuse to do it. We all make decisions in life. Is this one I'll regret? Possibly, but we're gonna do this together, okay? We're gonna explore an uncharted area of the internet. I will be your guide. I will ensure that you are safe. I will throw myself into the line of fire that is this book. So you may experience vicariously whatever is within here. That's what we're gonna do, so. Off we go. But before we dive into having this just really cool and normal experience together, I wanted to take a second to talk about the sponsor for today's video, which is Parade. Parade is a woman-owned brand that sells bralettes, underwear, pajamas, swimsuits, just all of the back of the closet stuff with special focuses on comfort, inclusive sizing from XS to 5XL, and also sustainability. My mom would always tell me growing up that it's important to wear underwear that you feel confident in. And I really don't think that she meant it this way, but for that reason, I have not worn a bra with an underwire inside of it since maybe like 2016. I just find them to be really, really uncomfortable. And you might not think I would have this problem just by looking at me, but I'm quite tall and my proportions are kind of goofy. So it was very difficult for me to find underwire bras that fit the way that they were supposed to. So when I tell you I was so excited when Parade reached out to me, I'm being completely serious because guys, they make the most comfortable and least obtrusive bralettes in the game. This guy right here is a daily driver for me. Not only does it fit like genuinely like a glove, I barely feel it there. It might as well not exist, but I also feel hot whenever I see myself in the mirror. I don't know what more you could ask for than that. Parade has a ton of different fabrics types that can suit whatever sensitivities or needs that you might have. I personally am partial to the Glow Satin, which is the one that I'm wearing. It's gorgeous and it feels way more expensive than it actually is, but I also really love their silky mesh fabric. I actually got a set recently. I'm a big set girly and guys, it is so cute. I genuinely could not recommend this brand enough if you're looking for something that you can feel good buying and then also feel good wearing. And if you're interested, they're having this gigantic sale for Black Friday and Cyber Monday that actually is ongoing as you're watching this video. The sale is 30% off site-wide, but if you use my code, interjection. They made the discount better since I filmed this, so you can actually use my code NOVA-BF to get an additional 20% off at checkout, coming up to a total of 50% off the entire website for the Black Friday sale, which is just insane. So you should go and check that out, and thank you so much to Parade for sponsoring this video back to it. So very loosely, the actual plot of this book is you have this girl named Tiernan and her parents are giga rich, but also really neglectful. So they don't really socialize her properly. And then suddenly they die. And in their will, for some reason, her dad gives custody of Tiernan to his estranged stepbrother who lives with his two sons in the mountains. And her dad and her step uncle hated each other, apparently. So Tiernan's never met these people, but she goes to live with them anyways for a couple of months until she turns 18. They're all pretty weird in their own ways. The younger cousin is Noah, who rides motorcycles and wants to not live there anymore. And the older cousin is Caleb, who apparently hasn't spoken a word since age four, regularly brings dead deer into the house and is actually just a crazy person. And her uncle would be kind of normal, maybe, if, if he wasn't 40 in this story. Anyways, Tiernan goes on to develop feelings for all three of them. That's right, all three of them. You heard me, all three of them. And apparently every winter they can't leave their house because there's so much snow. And so Tiernan just stays there for a long time and things happen in the house. And many things occur there that were somehow worse than I expected, even though I expected them to be pretty bad. One of them has her. The other one wants her, but he, he's going to keep her. Mm. You hated my father, didn't you? Won't it be uncomfortable for you to have me here, Uncle Jake? I don't see your father when I look at you, Tyrion. And you don't have to call me uncle. I'm not really anyway, right? Ah! What are you doing, step bro? What are you doing, step bro? Ah! 
Why did I agree to read this book? What am I doing? What am I doing? You think you've done your time in the supernatural phantom in 2012, just having your child's eyes exposed to Dean X Sam fan fiction? It all just makes you think that you're ready for a book like this. You're not. <laughs> I'm not. Uh? <laughs> what? It's just a book. It can't hurt you. The book. <laughs> Okay, day two update of reading this book. I've officially finished everything else I had to do today, so I have no other obligations. I only have maybe like another hour max of sun left in the sky, which is a good thing, honestly, because this book is not meant to be read in the cold light of day. I am on page 172, chapter 11, if you're following along at home. And it's almost funny to me because Penelope Douglas is not a bad writer, but I just asking for a friend, what is going on in your mind to use those skills for evil in a book like this? Like what in this world possess you to put pen to paper and write this story? I just, I just have so many questions. I'm not going to spoil anything specific in this vlog or with this book in case you want to experience this, but it's just so much. Noah, weird. Uncle Jake, so weird. But Caleb, jail. That man should be in jail. <laughs> me personally, if I met somebody like Caleb, who apparently lives with me, I would simply move out. No thoughts in my brain. I would just vanish. They would never see me again. Like, is she not put off by the fact that he acts like a six foot tall, rabid grizzly bear who doesn't know English? Is that not enough for her? Time will tell, and this might shock you, but 170 pages into this book, and we have not yet crossed the point of no return, if you catch what I'm saying with these men. I feel pretty confident that they're all waiting to do anything too crazy until she turns 18, and then they're just trying in this cabin for the winter, which is a ridiculous idea to have, but I honestly think I'm onto something. And look, disclaimer, disclaimer, I'm not here to shame anybody for what they're into. It is none of my business if this book is really working for you, okay? Just don't tell your boss or your grandmother and you're probably gonna be fine. But do I like this book so far? Fuck no. <laughs> Absolutely not, but I also can't look away. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion. <laughs> Anyways, carrying on. I'll probably end up finishing this today. I don't know. I might not be the same person the next time we talk. I don't know if I'm ready for what I know is coming. Ah ha ha. <clears throat> We're not good influences on a girl. I'm not a girl. Have you ever had a man in your bed? He asks in a ragged voice. My heart skips a beat. Slowly, I shake my head. He leans down close to my ear. Have you ever been kissed? I nod. On places other than your mouth? Heat pulls between my legs. No, Uncle Jake. Why are you giving your Stephanie's a rice purity test? In the kitchen at like six in the morning. It's not even dark outside, dude. Keep it in your pants. Like, oh, hi, Tiernan. Good morning. Do you want some eggs? Have you ever gone through the motions of intercourse fully dressed? It's just so impossible to take seriously and yet also inspires this visceral rage within me. <sighs> No. <laughs> well, she sure did turn 18. Jail for everybody in this book. Uncle Jake. Uncle? Now? It took so long in this book, I feel, for things to start happening, but now that they have, I don't know how I'm going to last another 200 pages. <clears throat> I have everything I want in this house. It is all there, just under one roof. Everything a girl could need to get through the winter. You know, even things like this could have cute moments. He's helping her with her night terrors. What a man. They're related. <laughs> <laughs> he slapped me without hesitation tonight. But the dogs love him most, don't they? They follow him, sleep with him, and make him smile when he thinks we don't see. <laughs> the dogs love him, as if it's impossible for a sociopath to own pets. Okay, yeah. Both of them. Power through. Power through. This book just loves taking the character development of one particular character and just flipping it around and saying, Psych, here's another 45,000 reasons that he's the worst person to ever do it. Oh, you thought that you could sympathize with this man? Just kidding. Let's make this even edgier. I don't know about that one. I just don't know... About that one, that's how I'm feeling as I'm nearing the ending of this book. Just power through, just power through, power through. I'm powering through. I finished it. So she picks one of the people in this book. By the way, don't like who she chose, but I wouldn't have liked any of them. But I just want you to imagine with me the best man speech that will be given at this wedding. Just the potential material there. Oh yeah, like remember when like you and I both, you know, <laughs> there was this one winter where we all just 
you know, but now you're married monogamously. And I just think that's beautiful. Like, final thoughts, feelings, and opinions on this one. One, every character in this book actually should go to jail. Nobody should be free of consequences. It's just profound to me how terrible this entire situation was. And every time you're like, that's pretty bad, it just kept getting worse. Not a single character left this book unscathed. Two, you pick the wrong guy, and I hate that for you. You go through all of that and then end up picking him? It's just not meant for me to understand. Three, this is like the third or fourth TikTok book that I've read that just like felt really compelled to have some ridiculous subplot crop up in the last 70 pages. I don't know why they keep doing that. Like we all know why we're here. It's just not for Grand Theft Auto and we all know it, but it was there nevertheless. And four, I don't think I can give this more than one star. No shade to people who are able to just let all of the feminism leave their body whenever they're reading a work of fiction that sets women's rights back several decades. I respect your ability to use batshit nonsense like this as escapism, but I can't do it, okay? Not a single man in this book is deserving of your sympathy. The shit that they do is just so uncalled for and gross, and I just... It's not a book for me. Now, is it worth the hype? Does it deserve the million videos on TikTok? That is a far weirder question to ask because I have no idea why this book of all books went viral. Genuinely baffling to me. Like this feels like something that I would have read accidentally when I was 13 on Wattpad, not knowing what I was getting myself into. Which like spiritually, that's actually exactly how I feel reading this now and going through this experience, harrowing as it was as a 23 year old woman. But like the fact that this blew up so much, like how? I just don't understand. And the smut like might have been good occasionally, but I could just never turn off the part of my brain that was like, they're related. Not technically by blood, I don't care. Okay, I don't care. They are related. She calls him uncle. <sighs> now, should you read this book? Well, if the premise sounds gross to you already, you won't like it, I promise. I promise you it's worse than what you think it is. You know, some things in life you don't have to explore. You don't have to be curious about them. You can just act in your own best interest and do something else. And I wouldn't know anything about that. I'm gonna go take a shower. If I have more thoughts, I'll share them with you when we start the next book tomorrow. Off I go. Okay, good morning. Hello. Yeah, I'm still a little bit razzled. I think that anyone would feel razzled after consuming as many pages of Credence as I did yesterday. And speaking of which, I have some more thoughts on that, but I've come to the conclusion that I think it just needs its own video. And I don't know what that'll look like yet, but I just need to talk about the spoiler sections of that book or I'm going to combust, so. It has to be done. But next up, because we're still reading viral TikTok books, I forgive you if you forgot that that was the video that you clicked on before we started this journey, but that is what this is. The next book for this video is A Good Girl's Guide to Murder by Holly Jackson. Has there ever been a bigger tonal shift in the history of a reading vlog? I'm not sure. But this is a very popular young adult thriller that I feel like everybody above the age of 12 has read, except for me. Once again, this is probably not what you expected me to pull out after the last book. But this is legal, okay? It's probably even more viral than Credence is. It's within the terms that I set out for for this video. We investigate a lot of different genres on this channel. Don't let anyone convince you that I don't have range. This book is about this girl named Pip who reopens this like seemingly closed murder case as a school project. And the case surrounds this guy who allegedly killed his girlfriends and then himself after he was put under suspicion. And it's become like the tragedy of this small town, even though it was pretty open and shut, except it's actually not that simple. It is in fact quite complex, I imagine, or else there would be no book. I have managed to go my entire career on book social media without getting this spoiled for me. And it's always sounded like something I would find really fun. So in my head, I've been saving it in this case that says like break glass in case of emergency. And this is an emergency. I just need to read a book that reminds me that stories can still be cozy and fun and light. That's what I'm looking for. I just want something very low stakes to solve. You know? So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be up to today. Just bleaching my brain on young adult thrillers. Mm-hmm, yep. I proceeded to make myself some tea to boost my cognitive capacity and then dissolve into the next couple of hours, like literally not moving at all until it was lunchtime and I was a little over halfway through the book. Okay, checking in. I feel like my experience with this book so far has been the literary equivalent of watching cat videos for several hours after learning about the worst news of your life. I just don't know how to properly capture how much I needed this, <laughs> okay? I'm just having a really good time. One of 
my favorite parts of this book so far is that Pip is investigating this crime alongside the surviving little brother of that original suspect who died. His name is Ravi. Their vibe together is actually just really endearing. And on top of that, they're not even related. Low bar, but not for this video. It isn't like outright a romance subplot, but I'm really hopeful. I feel like I can see it. He's got nicknames for her. They've got banter collectively. I just don't know where else that could go. In terms of the actual mystery so far, I don't really know where it's going, which is pretty cool. The characters are actually quite smart, at least in terms of solving and putting puzzle pieces together. Like in terms of protecting themselves and making good decisions in the name of their personal safety, Pip especially is like the dumbest girl around when it comes to that. But with the actual case, Pip and Robbie come to the same conclusions as me about who to be suspicious of within like 20 pages every single time. So it's actually interesting to see them investigate because they're not just dumbed down for no reason, just because it's YA. My theory currently is really just heavy suspicion on every adult basically in the story. Other than Pip's parents, they just all rub me the wrong way. And a part of me is like, it was everybody. Like there's another young adult thriller that had the it was everyone twist and I eat that shit up. That feeling when it's bigger than we thought, that feeling when we're digging too deep, that feeling when we can never go back to how it was before, like that's my shit. But yeah, it's a good time. I'm gonna go eat my lunch and then just download the rest of this book to my brain. I guess. I had other things I theoretically wanted to do today, but I think I just need to have a new most recently read book, and it seems like I'm capable of just finishing this instantly, so I'll talk to you when I'm done with that. Things are getting tense. We have hostages. Wait, this is so sad. A no, young adult novel? What is this? Bridge to Terabithia? Okay. Robbie's ability to communicate is better than every man in the last book combined. Genuinely, I'm being so serious, they all need to enroll in the Robbie School of Apology. This man has a groveling PhD and he's not afraid to use it. Pip is so stupid. Like if this book was shelved in a different section, everybody would have a gun. She'd be dead. You can't just walk ass backwards into dangerous locales and expect like your gumption to act as a shield. Okay, you're insane. It is also a lot of fun but you didn't hear that from me. Okay, it's the same day. Approximately two more hours have passed and I have officially made it through this book. It's over. We did it at an alarming pace. And this was really, really good. I am so aware that I could be inflating this based on the fact that this book was here for me during a very vulnerable moment of my life, but it was just really well done. I think I would give it a 4.5. It is about as good as my other favorite young adult thrillers, which I don't actually think I've ever given one five stars before, which feels mean, especially since I really like the genre, but I don't know, it's all a feeling. Anyways, I really liked the way that the mystery in this book resolves, even though the active role that Pip played in the resolution was one of the most ridiculous things that I've read since children being in the FBI in None Shall Sleep. Like she would be dead at least three times over in the real world, but you know what? Good for her. She sure did solve that crime and she got her mans. That's a productive couple of months for Pip. Now, is this worth the hype? Well, if you already like young adult thrillers, yes, you will probably love this. It's just a really well done execution of its genre. But if you already know you don't like that genre, I don't think that this is going to convince you. I've said it before, but for me, keeping young adult thrillers on hand is just like a healthy person going and pre-buying NyQuil and soup from the grocery store in advance of becoming sick. I mean, as you have literally seen today, as I've gotten through this book in the past like five hours, they're just really easy for me to get through when I feel like I'm on the verge of a reading slump. I really like the coziness. I enjoy the lower stakes sometimes as a treat when they still have fun vibes, which these almost always do, but they will almost never blow your mind and that's okay. So this book won't change your life, but I think that it's really well done for what it is. I know this is a series, like there are other books that are in the same universe. I will say, I think this could be read as a standalone, like it felt like a complete story. So I feel like we're probably going to get some Scooby-Doo kind of monster of the week solving action in the other books, as opposed to a really big overarching mystery. But with that said, I mean, there were a couple of corruption related loose ends. So maybe those get unloosened. I don't know. I, I do want to read them though. I'm not driving to the bookstore right now. I would never do that. I'm not currently at the bookstore right now. That doesn't sound like me. Just weird of you to assume that I would just go and buy books randomly on a Thursday. I had these all along. So yeah, this is a series, <laughs> it turns out. I want nothing more in this life than to just sit down and absorb the rest of this series. But if I don't finish this video, I'm going to break out in hives. So last book, let's move on, Archer's Voice. This is one of those TikTok romance novels that's on that pipeline from self-published Kindle Unlimited ebook to some major publisher, picks it up and starts printing a million copies after it goes viral. That's the vibe of this. And I honestly haven't had very good luck with books in that genre that I picked up off of TikTok, but based on what little I know about this, which is almost nothing to be fair, it just seems a little bit more up my alley. It's supposed to be slower paced and more serious and kind of sad. And I like all of those things because I'm a crazy person. So I thought I would give this the old college try. So that's what we're gonna do. Oh, no shot. <laughs> I will never be free. This is going to sound so much like a bit, but I swear on my life, I didn't do this on purpose. <laughs> I had no way of knowing. 
I feel like this knowledge has to have been locked up in my brain somewhere. But it seems, based on the back of this book, that I've somehow picked out maybe the only romance novel that I could have possibly picked that also has a love interest that doesn't talk. That's why this is called Archer's Voice. I feel like the dumbest woman to ever do it. I need to lobotomize myself so I don't spend this entire book thinking about Caleb from the last book. They're not the same. They're not the same. Their names are not remotely similar. Nobody's making me read this, but now I've committed to the bit. You know, it's just too funny for me not to follow through. But I'm strong. I'm going to repress that memory. It can't hurt me. I'm going to go into this book with an open heart and just hope for the best. That's that's what we're gonna do. I don't know how much I'm going to read tonight, but I kind of plan on grinding. So off I go to do that. Yep. So this book is about a girl named Bree who spontaneously decides to move to Maine after a violent attack that killed her father and left her traumatized. When she is there, she ends up meeting Archer, who fortunately is absolutely nothing like Caleb, thank God. Archer lost his ability to speak in his own terrible accident that killed his family when he was a child. And ever since, he's been kind of a hermit. No friends, no direction, kind of scruffy, you know the drill. But Bree happens to know sign language since her dad was deaf, so she's really the first person that's able to bridge that gap and communicate with him. And obviously, they fall in love, and they and deal with their respective pasts. That's the book. You knew that was what was going on here. Checking in. I just finished chapter 18. Someone tell me why the smut in this book is giving wiki house sex ed articles. It's just, there's something about it that makes me really uncomfortable. It's hard to describe. It's just so awkward and Archer is acting like a 13 year old boy. I feel like just because he was poorly socialized doesn't mean that he didn't have access to like books. It is like especially weird because I feel like his character was shown to be quite perceptive and emotionally mature and intellectually curious. Just why is he so confused. Why is he acting like an eighth grader? And I liked them before they started making out. So the ball was really dropped there. Speaking of which, I mean, overall, yeah, I thought that this book had a decent start, like in terms of plot. I liked the small town vibes. I liked the girl with dark past moves to new place to try to start a new life and ends up accidentally along the way forming genuine connections with the townspeople. It's a Stardew Valley Hallmark movie vibe that I occasionally appreciate in literature. But yeah, I don't want to speak too soon. It'd be too much of a pessimist, but I kind of just feel like we're starting a downward spiral. I also feel like the plot of this book is like foreshadowed derogatory. There's a word for that, I'm pretty sure. Telegraphed. Telegraphed. The plot is telegraphed. Maybe. I don't know. It's really late. But by that, I mean that the author is throwing in just random sentences that I feel like are obvious and explicit predictions of what will ultimately happen down the road. Just observations about characters in situations that have no other reason to be made or to exist other than the fact that, I don't know, the 15 year old reading this who didn't catch it the first time will have something to annotate the second time around. <laughs> like that's mean to say, but it's kind of the vibe. For example, there's this one guy in town who went on a date with Bree and she's like desperate to see him as a good dude but I know that the twist is going to be that he's not a good dude because constantly when he talks and when she says no to him in some way, the writing is just like, there was a flash of anger on his face, but it quickly righted itself to happiness as he smiled. And it's just like, I can see where this is going. And there are other parts of the book that are like that too, where I feel like the entire plot is just written out, but in weird ways in the background of the book that again are like foreshadowing, but like done poorly. And it's just like a writing style that I find kind of annoying because you know, I'm not dumb. Sure, when I was 12, I used to glaze over and basically only read dialogue when, when I read books, but I've evolved now, okay? I read every word that's on the page, so if you just toss in obvious explicit ties to the future plot, I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna put together the puzzle pieces because actually you've just handed me the completed puzzle. All of that makes this sound worse than it is. This isn't nearly as bad as some of the other things I've read for TikTok, but sincerely that bar is like in the seventh circle of hell. All right, anyways, I'm gonna continue reading this book. I don't know how late I'll be up tonight. And don't mistake this for like, I couldn't stop reading. I was up really late. I kind of just like feel like doing it. You know, it's a neutral activity. This is the equivalent of doom scrolling on my phone later than I probably should. And then looking at the clock and saying, shit, I should have been in bed like two hours ago. That's like the kind of content that this is. I'm, I'm trying to be self-aware. Off I go. I'll update you as things continue to occur. Yep, that's everything. Bro, literally the next chapter, ick the size of Jupiter. I just don't feel comfortable with the way that this man is being written, as if he lacks not only real world experiences, but also the capacity seemingly for critical thought. What this man needs more than anything is access to one of those like relationship drama subreddits. If he just spent a day reading the top posts of all time in r slash am I the asshole, he would never get played like that ever again. God, you know a character is fucked when the solution to their problems is access to Reddit. <clears throat> I want to be able to love you more than I fear losing you, and I don't know how. Teach me.
don't let me destroy this. That's kind of a bar. Credit where credit is due for the anxious attachment style girls in the room. Roll call. <laughs> oh, I just got gotcha so hard. Genuinely, I just shed the cheapest tear of my entire life. Okay, I finished it. It's like... <laughs> four in the morning. <laughs> so I'll be good at bed. I'll give you my final take tomorrow. It was fine. It had some all right messages and a lot of things that were kind of cringe. And I'll tell you more about it tomorrow because today needs to be over. Good night. Good morning. Hello. Late one last night, but we pushed through. We stayed strong. Let's get straight to it. Final rating for this book. I think this is going to be a two-star read for me. It had a decent setup, and I actually do think that the overarching thematic message of the story is really sweet, even if it was kind of cliche in the way it was executed. I also thought the book had a nice start. I feel like I was legitimately hopeful for this for maybe the first hundred pages, but then just very suddenly, boom, they were in love and everything just started to go to shit from there. Because overall, the book just made me feel weird for the reasons that I discussed last night, none of those really got better. There was just something about the way that Archer was characterized that was very childlike at points. And Bree's internal monologue was just... She kept calling him, like, her sweet, silent boy, her beautiful, mute boy. And every time she had a thought that was like that, it just made me want to throw this book into the ocean. So the more established their relationship got, the more I kind of started to hate this. I also think sometimes authors feel compelled to give their characters trauma for the sake of making them have interesting backstories that can make the plot do really neat things. But oftentimes, because they don't know what it's like, maybe, to have those specific traumas, they just end up forgetting them completely when it's inconvenient to what is happening in the plot. And then the whole thing just reads as kind of a caricature of what it's like to have bad things happen to you and recover from them. For example, Brie is cured basically instantly from what were apparently daily panic attacks that specifically surrounded intimacy just by virtue of like sleeping in the same house as Archer. She never feels anxiety there ever again for the rest of the book. It just felt very unrealistic and really took me out of the emotional pull of the backstories of these characters, just seeing how they were able to get through so many things basically instantly. And also on top of that, that quote when Archer was like, when the child asked me the sign for love, I showed her your name. That was cute, okay? I am not embarrassed to admit that it had me kicking my feet a little bit. But then towards the end of the book, when those two went, I Brie you, I Archer you, I wanted to throw up in my mouth. Like, what the fuck was that? Hard, hard pass. So yeah, with all of that said, I understand more with this book than some of the others that I've read why people are so into it. Again, it has a sweet message and some nice moments, but overall it just was not worth the hype for me. If you have a guilty pleasure soft spot for small town cliches and saccharine sweet redemption stories, then you might enjoy this. But if you don't, I would just be careful with this one. Moving on, and also in conclusion, one thing that I think is really important to remember that I didn't really have a natural place to discuss elsewhere in this video is that BookTok is not a monolithic platform. Like, yes, I've gotten a lot of very rancid recommendations, but I've also found some books that I really, really love because there are just so many people who are making content on BookTok that goes beyond the few Colleen Hoover books that go mega viral that if you feel like you're only getting bad recommendations, it's possible that you're just not following the right people for you. So to help you, I'm throwing up on screen right now some accounts that I think are really, really good, specifically with off the beaten path recommendations. And I might not share every single opinion on books with all of these people, that would be impossible, but I have read and loved at least one pretty niche pick from each of these accounts. So if the classic book talk books are not doing it for you, I would give it a second chance by digging a little bit deeper with these people because I think that you might be surprised. But yeah, that's the video. We made it through, truly experienced a range of different emotions together this week. I'll probably do more videos like this in the future because I just love reading popular books kind of regardless of whether or not I actually enjoy them. I just find them really interesting to try to understand. But if you like this video, please leave me an actual like. It really does help. And if you don't already subscribe, then you should do that. It blows my mind that there's already 50,000 of you because when I first moved to YouTube, I was pretty concerned that nobody would want to listen to me ramble about things for this long. So it's really cool that you guys are here and I really appreciate all of your support. Okay, that's enough emotions for one day. I'll see you very, very soon with some more stuff, but that's everything I have to say. Bye.